once again. It was an incredible performance that we saw last game. So oh. giving it up again, I think it's a little risky. The Lorelei is something that we mentioned, uh, Sui Generis, and I feel like it's definitely one that needs yeah, to be Kraken respected. Yeah, uh, definitely Shin and uh, China has played jungle Lorelei, which is actually very strong. So now Vox is open here. Vox would be a very good pick because Vox is actually good into Rona, especially with Arden. Rona won't be able to touch the Vox with the Vanguard, with his Sonic Zoom. But they're going to Samuel. prioritize the Samuel. Again, they're prioritizing the CP uh, carries here. Samuel Tatuki is one of the best Samuels in all of East Asia. We mentioned that we might see this hero being picked up just because he is stronger in 2.10 as well. He got a slight buff, very slight one. But with Tatuki being such an incredible player, we see that Nation pick it up. Well, we'll see how they can use this Samuel to make an impact on this series. They are currently 1-0 down, so they need this game. We already talked about how influential this game specifically will be across the course of this group. Detonation, they need this game in the bag if they want to keep their chances good on moving on into the quarterfinals. Yeah, some other junglers they have played are... Actually, Batiste actually has been a popular pick for Kraken. Taco would not be good here, although it would be makes sense into a Samuel, but with Arden being there, he kind of counters the Taka. The, the Vanguard would save the Samuel, help him peel, and then once Samuel has Frostburn, he can just basically slow with his uh, Madison Verdicts against the Taka here. So they're going to make a decision here. Are they going to go with Batiste, Rona potentially? But Rona is still a very strong pick here with the Lyra and with how well they played Rona. Yeah, you can see Kraken putting a lot of thought into wow. these picks, but then they get their two locked in quickly going to be the Celeste mm -hmm. coming through with the Kroll. Yeah, I mean, we saw a very similar comp come out of the Nation Gaming, actually, last game, where they had the Sky, they had the Kroll. It's all about protecting that hyper carry. This time around, it's for Kraken, and they have the Celeste. So if Kroll plays better around his carry, they could definitely pull off the 2-0 right here. The interesting thing is, though, this is not the Kraken play style that we're used to seeing. This is not a hyper-aggressive composition. This is much more of the sit back, wait for your opponents to try and come to you and keep your carry safe while kiting away. But at the same time, Samuel fits that so same sort of bill. Usually when we see a Samuel, they're trying to kite a team fight backwards as well. So it'll be really interesting to see how Detonation finishes off their composition and how then they go head to head against this Kraken Conference. It's going to be a Vox as the final lock-in here for Detonation. So Suijay, what are your thoughts on these two drafts then as first impressions on these? Kraken definitely wins the late game with Celeste, but Samuel is very strong in the early to mid phase, especially the mid phase. So if Destination can make a play with Vox scaling and Samuel scaling the mid phase, they can take this game. But if they don't end it and let Kraken get to late game with the crew and Celeste, that's going to be a really tough matchup. We'll see if Kraken can get to late game. Araki, thoughts? I mean, I have to agree. It's all about getting to the late game. However, they do have the Lyra, who brings a lot of sustain throughout that mid game. So even though Samuel does hit a, a huge power spike where he can siege, the Lyra can counterplay it a little bit by continuing on to sustain the Celeste in lane. So much of this game is going to be in basically hanging in the balance in the jungle between the Samuel and the Kroll. If Samuel uses that level two power spike and goes aggressive against the Kroll right away, if Lyra's up in the lane to try and take care of things up there, then all of a sudden Detonation can get themselves a huge early game lead. All right, we'll see if they can actually make that happen here. This feels like a very different composition from what we saw out of Kraken in game number one. But that could be a huge boon for them. If they can win with these two very dramatically different compositions, they're going to be looking fantastic as they move on towards the tournament. Yeah, especially that nation. If they make these double gauntlet plays happen, it's going to look beautiful because Lyra, although has one portal, they don't normally build Echo. So if you double gauntlet, you can actually trap the team and make some very nice plays. The only problem is to do that, you need to get so close versus the Celeste that has such a longer range. So for Kraken, they're going to need to abuse that range advantage that they have. And with what we saw in the first game, how well they understand their win condition, I feel like Kraken will be able to close it out here. All right, we'll see if Kraken can close this one out. It's about time to get on into this game. I'm going to pass it once again over to Jaws and Excoundrel to find out if Detonation can even things up or if this will be 2-0 to Kraken. Thank you very much, guys. Round number two. Here we go. Kraken took quite a decisive game of Destination Gaming in game number one. But can they flip the tables? Can Destination use their years of experience together to just beat Kraken down?
I think I agree with what the analyst desk was saying primarily. You have a Samuel and a Vox here. Now, Samuel is good at one thing in the jungle, and that is coming to lane and pressuring that lane turret early on. That is what you need to do against the Celeste. You need to get a lot of pressure in that lane, especially before level eight. Draw Cruel into the lane to help defend where he is going to be less useful. Cruel is a really good 1v1 jungler. So Samuel needs to run to the lane, push that lane with Vox, push that lane, you know, obviously, as Samuel can, pressure that first turret and look to put pressure on Celeste before she can scale up like crazy. Well, it was a very slow game in game number one, in all honesty. Maybe that Celeste can get rolling if it... The battle for the, the Halcyon Fold has begun. But we're going to jump on the fold and find out Detonation versus Team Kraken. This time Kraken are over on the blue, Detonation over on the red. We'll see if that domination can come through once again. Yeah, and the one worry that I'm going to have is a lot of this is going to be off uh, Kiz's ability to get those double gauntlets down. You know, you have to dive a Celeste in a lot of ways. You have to look, put a lot of pressure on it. You have to close the distance very quickly. Double Gauntlet will be a really good way to do that. But at what point do you get Double Gauntlet unlocked here for Detonation Gaming? And are you going to be in a position where you can burst the Celeste easily enough, especially through the Lyra's healing, which on 2.10 is before she had the nerf? So 2.11, she had a nerf to the health scaling of her healing. On this current update, she is really strong with stacking health. She can basically full heal a Celeste almost towards the end of the game. So you're going up in, sta in the sta stages where you're going to get Echo on, on, on Arden, but you're probably at that point also looking at a very high-scaled Celeste, as well as also having a very high-scaled Lyra, who's going to be able to do a lot of work to heal her. Third Nation Gaming playing Team Kraken at their own game with this early aggression on the Elder Trin. It will get taken away. Unfortunately, Mr. Dog did not quite pick that one up with the Sigil. I like this as well from uh, Team Kraken. They were so aggressive for the Elder Trio in the first game, but they know that they probably can't duel too heavily early on this time round, especially versus a Samuel and the range advantage that Detonation Gaming have. So they are kind of backing off and, and tempering things. Oh, oh. Tatsuki takes so much damage. He's got the shielding from the Vanguard. Avalo should be all right. He's in that brush, taking a lot of damage as well. Actually, has to pop that blast. Going quite hard on Quiz. Here comes Mua as well. Kiz in a lot of trouble. Elder Trin doesn't quite root him up. Oh, but he roots up the Cruel instead. Tatuki's now on the front line. Kiz gets out of there alive for the time being. Mr. Dog chasing him up. Manages to secure the kill with the Principal Arcanum. And now Royal in a lot of trouble. Mua is just pushing in. Royal now has to back off. And that was slightly questionable from Detonation Gaming. I like the, the, uh, the I guess, the thought process, but I like the thought process is going to the end game. Whoa, oh, Mua taking Mua a lot going of very low. There's the blood for blood. Kiz comes in. Two captains with two of the kills now. Elder Treant, though, is going to get secured by Team Kraken. I like the thought process from Detonation to go into the backs there, but they didn't really get a major advantage off the back of their Elder Treant. So you weren't in a position where you've got a kill on Cruel already, for instance, and you're trying to force a two versus one. That was an easy rotation from uh, Team Kraken. They pushed the lane up into the Vox. Vox couldn't rotate because the lane was pushing against him. And then they were able to rotate three members down to put pressure on Detonation, who tried to make that aggressive roam. So it was, it was probably a little bit over-aggressive from Detonation. Maybe they feel pressured in this game to try and take an advantage early on against this Celeste that's going to scale up like crazy. And you can see um, Mua looking towards, he's got a Void Battery already. He might then go towards either, uh, you see multiple Celeste builds, but Eve of Harvest first is fine. Clockwork is, you know, first is fine. A lot of Celestes have a, a variety of builds here. And maybe she's just looking for ultimate energy regen to try and get a huge amount of wave play coming down because this is the best thing that you could do as Team Kraken right now. Get a huge amount of wave play coming down on Celeste. Prevent that first turret going down for as long as possible. I want to see Detonation Gaming rotate to lane super quickly. Four minutes onwards, I want to see Samuel in lane at every given opportunity, sieging that turret with his Drifting Dark and Malice and Verdict. Well, look at the turret here on Team Kraken's side of the field. Already down to about two thirds HP. Mua hasn't spent uh, the majority of time in the lane. He's just been bullied out by Royal. Even Kiz paying him a little visit as well. Mr. Dog will be able to sustain him up and Babala is in this bush. I think Kiz saw him, so that's why they're backing off now. They're going to flare him out regardless. And like you said, Tuki, that's why we want to see him and he's up in the lane. Yeah, but he came in after the rest of Team Kraken was already there, so you don't even have the advantage moving in. There's the Drifting Dart. Land some good Malice and Verdicts, and suddenly you're in a fighting position to see this turret. Huge oh, damage. Huge on damage Mua. on Mua. Tatuki just forcing him out here. Bubalo actually had to trade a little bit of his own life bar there just to save Mua. Let's move forward. Royal just focusing on that turret down by Borg into the core collapse. Another Helio Genesis. A couple of basic attacks will kill him, but Vanguard is there oh, to save him. Oh, the oh. snipe, baby! 
Tatsuki finds his first kill of the game. Nice snipe with the Vanson verdict. That is exactly what I wanted to see Detonation Gaming doing, just putting pressure on with that range advantage that they have at this stage in the game, the great push advantage, the siege power. They're going to go for this first turret. It's very close to going down here. One more min minion wave and they should be able to get there. Celeste is coming back. We'll see if they've got enough time to put pressure on this turret. They should be able to push this minion wave up and get it, you would hope. Yeah, you can imagine so, especially with Babalaba being very low as well. This massive verdict is starting to rain down. Sigil to heal up Babalaba. Oh, oh, there we go. Mr. From Hell's Heart does Lang Ishton to the core collapse. Mr. Dog secures the kill. Aye, they were so desperate to push onto that turret. I would have done as well, but Babala hit six. You have to be aware of those level, uh, level ups. I don't think that uh, Detonation Gaming had any idea that Babala had hit level six, and it was a really nice execution from Team Kraken there. Instantaneous into the double stun. Samuel could do nothing with no reflex block at this point in time. And suddenly they're able to weather the storm, and, and the longer they weather the storm, the more time they give to Celeste, and the one commodity that Celeste loves right now is time. And time is what she needs to get up to scaling up towards those later game builds. Clockwork first, interesting choice. You don't see it all the time in a lot of other regions, but it will give her the ability to spam Heliogenesis and be basically be able to clear waves a little bit more efficiently. Oblivion does catch one. Wait for it is going to get blocked. Nice use of the Crucible there. And the turret does end up falling as well. Destination using that Oblivion to zone and to secure themselves a little bit ago. Yeah, that was a nice double uh, Oblivion into a silence there coming up from Detonation Gaming. The primary aim is what you saw. They just wanted to get that first turret off the map. Opening up this first turret now allows them to be a bit more aggressive in the jungle. They can look for more opportunities to put pressure on the Celeste. If you push that lane up and Celeste is constantly trying to clear it, you can set up for things like Gold Miner. This opens up the map now for Detonation Gaming, but they need to use that space to put pressure on Celeste and force her to make decisions between farming and potentially contesting neutral objectives, or helping rotate towards the jungle where Detonation Gaming to look, can look to be a bit more aggressive. They can also do more of the same jaws. They can also just again rotate to lane and put pressure on that tier two turret. So there's lots of things that Detonation Gaming can do in this game to start to push their advantage now. They don't have a huge one, but they have got the map opened up and uh, this is where they really need to start pulling the trigger. Kiz is halfway to level six as well, and as soon as that gauntlet comes through, Tuki will be able to layer that with the Oblivion. But I like the first pick up here by Mr. Dog. Pick up. Oh, hang on a second. Stun does land Solar Storm as well. My Isn't God. even looking at that one. He just got instantly deleted. Another kill on the board from Mr. Dog. Team Kraken. Want to just push in this turret. Yeah, they have got such beautiful. Uh, synergy between all of their, sk their skills. It's like a symphony of abilities coming up from Team Kraken right now. They're going to put pressure onto oh, Tuki as well. Tuki in a lot of trouble. Oh, those stacks are building up. Oh, they just can't quite save. Uses those boosts to get away. Oh, oh the Oblivion to zone as well. But Torrent loses Agar on the key member. Here comes Royal. Going to use those boosts. Babylon are going very low. Mua in a 1v2 situation. Still taking down to Tuki. Royal's going to be able to find oh, one. And they find the next word. as well. Two kills to Detonation. So many good things happen over the course of that fight for Detonation Gaming. Yes, Team Kraken, characteristically going aggressive here in that situation, but like you said, Tutuki zoning out the only escape path that was safe into the jungle with the Oblivion. That meant that Cruel had to tank the turret a bit longer. They're going to get on this. Mr. Dog, wrong place, wrong time. Passageway over the wall. Elder Trin isn't going to quite save you, but the Crystal Sentry will. And with Babylon rotating down as well, they're just going to satisfy themselves with a Sentry kill. I like that. It takes something off the map, at least for that team fight win. You need to always think about what you can gain from the map once you take a team fight win like that and detonation they get that crystal sentry. It might not seem like much, but these small objectives add up in the grand scale of things. That team fight though was beautiful, George, you know, previously. The, the, the oblivion to zone, the way that, that Tatuki danced between the heliogenesis to make it difficult for um, Moi to, to basically select one to use a supernova on, he danced between them so well. Oh, it was just beautiful from Detonation Gaming. It shows you what they are truly capable of as a team when they are playing on all cylinders firing. Just their siege potential as well is so big, and even with Kiz hitting oh, the level that's the six. Wrong way. Whoops, Daisy. It's all good. That's a big Heliogenesis, though. He does get healed up. Mua taking a lot of damage. He's got that range advantage now, but look at those Malice and Verdicts really striking it when it hurts. This is now. the point in the game where Samuel needs to start to put pressure. He's gone for a Frostburn first, which is not something that you often see on Samuels. The reason Samuel kind of wasn't super meta in 2.10 was that he had a pretty awkward build path. There's Gola a Gauntlet. comes in. Royal's going to be the back line. Nice core collapse on him, though. Straight into the From Hell's Heart. It gets stunned up, locked up, and he's dead. Passageway as well. It's going to get a nice little bit of distance there. Quiz is going to very low, and Kiz ends up falling now to Tuki in the 1v3. 
PDO Genesis raining down, but it should be Team Kraken taking this turret. That was Mr. Dog blocking a bot silence with a crucible, allowing Moi to basically set up for a big solar storm. Suzuki now has to be super careful here. I think he'll get away, but my word, that was brilliant from Mr. Dog. It allowed Mua to essentially turn around Ooh. and blow up Royale in the middle of that team fight. He, he got, he, the silence didn't go through. He was able to cast Heliogenesis, Heliogenesis into, um, into the uh, Solar Storm, and he got a massive piece of damage down onto to Royale. I like that they're now considering their own reflex blocks. I think they do need it. Um, they weren't there before, but I think right now, all of these little bits of, of, of advantages that are being given over to Team Kraken is only going to help accelerate their cause. They, they have gone for clockwork into shatter glass, so scaling up in pure burst damage right now. You can see how quickly Mua is, is basically clearing those waves. Just one-shotting them at this point. Pretty scary situation, but that's a scary situation. 700 damage Helio Genesis. Boomerang with a surfboard doesn't quite land. That'll be Kiz just blocking that up with the Crucible. And now it's all the pressure game, but Kiz takes half his HP just in a couple of Helio Genesis steps forward. He gets punished for it. Avalar now finds himself on Tsutuki. Kiz going very low, has to exit the fight automatically. Just going very, very low at this point still. That's found to no X scoundrel. Maybe trying to bait them in at this point. Yeah, maybe trying to bait them in just a little bit. He also might want to get that Life Spring passive working so he doesn't need to regenerate as much health off the Fountain active. I love that Royale basically took an aggressive position there, trying to clear the wave, trying to essentially say, oh, yeah, I dare you to go for them. I have position on your Celeste. I'm building breaking point stacks on your Lyra. I'm looking to get into that back line. So he basically had a really good aggressive position that made it difficult for Team Kraken to select where they wanted to fight. I like the Shatterglass build on Mua as well. This is basically saying that I'm looking to blow up your carries. I'm going for Shattered Glass to get the maximum burst damage down onto someone like Tatuki or Royale. Royale has responded by getting tier 2 shielding, which is going to help him immensely, but Tatuki is still very vulnerable to the supernovas coming out from Mua just because of that Shattered Glass. Well, there's the dragon's eye completed from Tatuki. Whoa! Passage range, the bright bulwark straight into the surfboard as well. Oblivion's going to come out of this to everybody. Kiz going very low. There's the Gorlo to the escape disengage. And now Tatuki over on the side of the wall. Babylon taking a lot of damage. Did get stunned up as well. That is still Team Kraken with the health bar advantage. Royal is going to have to back here as well, which results in another turret. Yeah, the siege potential from Team Kraken now that they've hit these item spikes. They've hit that level spike on Celeste so easily as well. I feel like this is going to be difficult for uh, Detonation Games to come back. They've got to fight us now as well. Yeah, Tatsuki is in a lot of trouble here. Babalava is going to be able to chase him up. Although, saying that, Frostburn is doing a lot of work for him. Yeah, and actually look at Detonation Gaming. He's got them caught between a rock and a hard place right now. Babalo's trying to find it, but he can't quite get to him. They're going to go straight onto Mua. Fountain used there, easily healing them up. But Tatuki, not much energy left. He's in the front line, so he's oh, almost going to hit him. Almost damage. executes him. And now Kiss having to back off as well. Royal, though, playing up really aggressively. Oh, look straight into collapse. the core collapse. Vanguard's going to keep him alive for the time being, but Kiss ends up taking his own life, basically. He just steps up to the plate and gets punished for it. And now Mr. Dog, Babalo's going to chase him through, and that is Team Kraken with the ace. Oh, Detonation Gaming had the perfect setup to put pressure onto Team Kraken there, but they didn't consider the fountain coming out. Royale, I think, had the right motivation going in to put pressure on Tamua. He knew that a lot of the resources had been expended to try and save him, but he didn't manage to block the core collapse because I don't think he had the reflex block up at the time. It was a beautiful core collapse from Mua. Let's take a look at that again. Watch Royale very carefully. He's building breaking point stacks on the outside. So he's getting those breaking point stacks up. He's seen his opportunity to go into Celeste, but that core collapse was just so, so good from Mua. And it allowed him to essentially then collapse onto the box and take him down. Samuel was in no position, no position to contend in that fight because of how low he was. But uh, uh, Mua is a god. This guy is unbelievably good. And, and this is a team that we just don't know enough about. Well, I tell you what, after this series, we know all we need to know. They are a bloody brilliant team. mooga has got a large backpack, and it contains a Krul and a Lyra <laughs> at this time. I think, oh, no, I, I think that's disingenuous to say <laughs> that that backpack contains anything. All of them have got a backpack, and it's, <laughs> it's containing their Are they all team. inside each other's backpacks, stacked up in a little, a little tower? They, they are... Uh, look, this is a team coming into Worlds that we found it very difficult to research. We couldn't find much many videos of them because obviously it, it's difficult for people outside the channel to do so. We didn't know much about their playstyle. They have come into Worlds and they are taking on one of the most consistent competitors of our previous World Series. 
Detonation on the wrong side of the map completely. Team Kraken, though, poking away. Look at this Heo Genesis set up here. The Cauldrons all over the battlefield. They're going to be able to back off, but Detonation Gating corralling them in to the turret. But for the moment, Team Kraken just easily just poking them out. They're just going to clear these waves. They're going to make it difficult. Basically, they're saying to Team Kraken, we're going to try and use that Samuel advantage every time we have it. And we're going to try and clear those waves. Oh, there's the portal in. Oh, the surfboard doesn't quite land. It actually just comes straight back. Boomerang indeed. Still, Kraken on the wrong side. They're just clearing out each other's waves, it's scandal. But Kraken have got the advantage <laughs> in terms of health bars. They're going to need to swap at some point. Royal going very aggressive. Suki trying to set something up here. Kraken has awakened as well. And now Kiz set very low. Heliogensis just raining death from above. Wait for it will come out. Only signs this move for the time being. And that's going to be a gauntlet in. Just separating them. But Kiz has separated himself. They already take down Tatuki. Solar Storm's going to smash Royal. And that'll just be the crew chasing him through. Spectral Smite takes him down to about half HP. And Kiz uses that other gauntlet as Mua easily solos him out. Team Kraken find themselves another ace. Unbelievable from Team Kraken again, just pinpoint perfect in their team fighting position. Mua able to just get so much damage off. Again, it was a really risky tactic from Detonation Gaming. They were essentially leaving themselves open for this kind of play coming from Team Kraken, simply because they had that side of the map. They had nowhere to retreat to. They were basically trying to use that range advantage from Samuel, poke out a little bit and find an engage after they'd done some damage. But they were never finding consistent enough damage coming from the Samuel. And now Team Kraken are going to get this, well, li literally get this Kraken off the back of that team fight. Infusion's coming across the board as well now. Mua is going to pick up his, his three items as well. Three damage items, I should say. Still got the flask just in case he needs that shielding a little, little bit later on. But with that Kraken on the board now, we've got to think about how that's actually going to impact the next couple of minutes, because Kraken, they have got so much range on their side. They're just going to be able to poke Detonation Gaming out. They are the ones that are going to have to engage. You can see Royale's gone for a Poison Shield Breaking Point Bone Saw build. It's a pretty popular build on Vox. Um, but realistically, I don't think he's facing up enough, up, up, up enough against armor to make it super worth it. I would have maybe considered the Sorrow Blade to be a bit more burst heavy for the Celeste. This is a more of an elongated fight build. I don't think they've been having the opportunity to build those fight stacks. From House Heart is going to get blocked by that Crucible. They're going to focus the turret with the crack and it's going to go down super low. There comes the Oblivion. Does go a little bit wide. Tatuki trying to kite back, but going extremely low. Gets jumped on. Mua going in melee mode. And there comes the Agorna as well. Does come down, but it doesn't matter because they're just going to block it for the time being. Still gets stunned up. Their Kraken's going to be able to focus the Crystal. And this just might be all over. Roar's going to be able to secure a couple of kills, but the Kraken is just going to finish off the base. Team Kraken are going to take game number two. 2-0 over Detonation.